All right, outdoor version of the Platform Podcast. Here we are at Western Springs at the Under-17 National Tournament. There's teams from all over the country here competing for a title. As you can see behind us, there's some passionate kids there. If you do hear swear words, we do apologise about that. They are competing pretty hard in the background. Um, I've got Mark Holt here. I mean, it's not every day you get to sit with a former Division One college coach, but also a Division One college coach from New Zealand is extremely rare. So, Mark... Thanks for being here, brother. Appreciate it. No, I appreciate you, man. And, like, look, the purpose of our podcast is to educate people, to let people know what they should be thinking about, put them in the right mindset for those that want to go to college in the U.S. And there's a few people now that think, you know, Division One's better than Division Two. If I don't go to a D1 program, I'm not going to go pro. I mean, let's just, before we dive into all of these things, um, what made you want to work in the college system? Um, it's just a step up from here. So resources uh, and I'd seen kids go as well and I wanted to be part of that and take my football education to the next level um, and fortunately enough we had a player go over um, and he had spoken to coach Harper about um, an opportunity was there an opportunity for a coach to come in um, he rated me highly and uh, got an opportunity to go as a volunteer assistant um, my my company at the sorry my uh, employer at the time was really great about um, letting me go uh, for three months and so I got the first season under my belt and uh, I was super lucky that um, the two coaches there, Coach Pfeiffer and, and Coach Harper, um, let me run things uh, in terms of on the field. Um, so I was able to coach um, and train the, train the whole group at times. Um, and they just gave me that kind of um, opportunity to, to really extend myself and cool. work with some great athletes. That's amazing. And what school were you at and what were the facilities like? Yeah, so Purdue, Fort Wayne, uh, it's in Indiana. It's about two hours north of Indianapolis. Uh, great facilities. So gate centre, uh, indoor centre, you've got your basketball, you've got your volleyball. Uh, you've also got a running track inside and it's, it's just under 70,000 square feet. Um, it's a huge facility um, and all the athletes get to go in there. You've got your um, strength and conditioning programs in there, one for uh, your athletes and one separate for your just general students. Um, obviously athletes can go to both. And then Heffa Field, which is our soccer complex. Uh, we were super lucky that we had uh, two, two match fields, both lit up, uh, great surfaces, and we had three training fields. We had a, another area called Plex, which uh, was indoor, so when it snowed, uh, we were able to use that, and there were other fields we needed it. Amazing. And I mean, what was it like being on the road as a Division One college coach competing against college teams? Were the Americans as passionate as New Zealanders are or more? <laughs> yeah, so um, we, were, we were fortunate. Um, while I was there, we were in the Summit League, which had Denver University, uh, and they had great facilities and, and great players. So they had Andre Shinchiki, who uh, was at Colorado Rapids and now at um, Charlotte. Um, and they had another centre back um, who also plays in the MLS, uh, um, Courtney Ford. And just the quality and standard and passion, um, it, it, there, there's nothing like it here, unfortunately. And so that's that next step, you know, and players love those environments. And, and seeing the other colleges in our, uh, uni uh, in our conference gave me the opportunity to look around like different schools and see what they were doing and take ideas from my coaching because um, every school's a little bit different, you know, and um, every coach is playing a different style. I see um, some colleges are, are, are looking for big boys, and, and we were definitely about footballers. Um, we wanted to be an attacking front foot team, position based, um, and really go at teams and, and have skill. And um, sometimes that was interesting, especially with video sessions, how we're going to unlock teams like that. Um, but seeing the facilities, like, you can't compare it to here. How do you compare New Zealand athletes to the American athletes coming in? Yeah, so um, just like athletic, yeah, know, like physicality, speed. Yeah, normally Do you think we're behind the mark. Uh, they're very athletic in the states. Very. Um, I think what sets us apart is we've got some very technical players, um, and if you can find the right coach that's looking for that, um, you're a dime a dozen. You know, you, you've kind of got the upper hand because those players are there in the states, but they normally go to like the big programs. We're a mid major, um, so kind of the next tier down of D1. And we were competing against teams that were physically strong, long balls in the box. And, and for us, we loved that because we were going, well, this is totally different style, not how we play, how are we going to um, counteract that? And we love to play counter-attacking football, but we also love to dominate. We've got some athletes as well that sometimes are not as athletically gifted as others. Yep. Maybe it's genetics, maybe they're not as tall. Um, and they might feel a bit down because sometimes coaches say you're not as athletic. Does that mean that they can't get an opportunity to play D1 or do they just have to maybe change their 
pathway into going into a D1, like maybe a transfer? Yeah, so to two routes, obviously we had a, we had a midfielder who was probably five, six, five, seven, but was naturally baller and, and we, we went with him. But um, there's other opportunities to go JUCO, NAIA, Division 2, um, and then look at that in the transfer portal. Um, we were talking earlier around the transfer portal and talking to the coaches at the moment, like a lot of, uh, especially our conference, they're looking for transfer students in their uh, junior and senior year, just because it's a safer option, you know. Um, as a freshman, you're going in raw, you haven't played at that level, no one really knows about you from New Zealand. Um, like, we'll, we kind of help them out, like coaches will always give good information, and um, it's really a risk for coaches to take a person on for a year good scholarship you know? so unless like they play for New Zealand or they're yep. playing in like a league that you know like maybe the national league and they're starting yep. is that where you'll put money into a player because he's a bit more trust and then the other guys that play in the regional stuff like northern central southern league you probably wouldn't make that investment is that something that you guys would think about yeah it'll definitely be considered um, and the great thing about my university at the time um, the university I was at was we had Kiwis there so we could talk to Kiwis and ask them their kind of thought processes on players uh, <laughs> Most of our players are based in Auckland, but we picked up a boy from Hamilton and a couple of them have played against them in national under-19 tournaments or um, National League Youth. Um, and that just gave us that kind of, um, I guess, guarantee. Um, but a lot of Kiwis don't have that. Um, and what I would say is, as a Kiwi, I would be looking at universities where there are Kiwis and talking to them. And they literally will give you a lot of information that if you don't ask the question, you don't have. Yeah, so I love that. A good, good decision for them. People not are really too keen at the moment, man, on going to a junior college because they think that it's a uh, lesser level. They think that it's going to set them backwards instead of send them forwards. They think it's going to hurt the academics. What are your comments on that? Uh, I disagree with that. I, like, there's different routes for every person, you know. And um, like, I've got players at Franklin, and I'm, I'm saying to them, like, JUCO may be your route, um, and that may be because of financial, um, academics. Um, but we know that they're probably a D1 player. Um, but there's some things that they need to work on and giving them that two years just gives them that stable base. Coaches get to see them at that level. Um, and from a D1 perspective, we were always looking at JUCO players, like how can we pick them up? Is there someone there that just wasn't hitting the, the academic requirements at the time that now are? Um, and it's a safer option for two years rather than taking them on four years, you know? So, yeah. yeah, I guess like when you guys are talking in your office and you've got video footage of a prospective student athlete, you're looking at their film, I um, mean, I guess you guys get emails all the day when you were coaching to this one soccer. I mean, how many emails were you getting? Yeah, so like 50, 50 a day roughly with footage. And to be fair, um, you want to make your, give you a little bit of insight on the video. Um, that first minute is key. Like there's times where, where coach was saying, watch 30 seconds, do you think yeah or nay? Because you just don't have that much time. And then we'd kind of nail down the, the videos that we thought, yeah, we'll watch the whole thing. Um, and then look into the rest of their kind of history, you know, and, and what is the SAT score, um, where they sit. Like, you can kind of tell a lot from a video on a player. Is that player lazy? Is that player um, engaged all the time? Are they looking to get on the ball? Are they looking to be dynamic? And we were looking for game changers. So we had the Americans that were going to work. Like, we had that. So then we were looking for internationals to come in, do a job in the first year, and that's changed now because of the transfer board. Okay, now that makes a lot of sense. So you guys are trying to minimize the risk as a coaching staff because you don't want to get the wrong player in. Correct. So is that why you guys were quite sold on the junior college transfers? Like you guys like getting a JUCO athlete? Yeah, we were a mix. Like we, we looked around. We were looking for the player that fit us. Um, JUCO was the safe option. And, you know, universities only have so much money to work with and they've got to get value for them. Um, and we're looking for guys that are going to get us results and that's not just on the field we wanted them to do well in academics we wanted them to push on we wanted them to get their degree but at the end of the day student athlete right so student first athlete second do your job in the classroom and we could tell from the two years prior what their academics were like and we could talk and get information from from their previous university and see if they fit us we find sometimes that there's some athletes that do really well in their smaller regions in New Zealand. They're like a big fish in a small pond, and then they go to the States and they don't get a look in and they get really uncomfortable over there. What's some of the feedback or some advice you could give athletes that are in these smaller regions that are doing really well about going to the US, making sure that, you know, I want these athletes that are listening to this, that they're not gonna go over there and expect just to walk into an environment and get game time, because that's probably not gonna happen, right? Yeah, uh, first and foremost, be realistic. Um, 
coaches getting you in there, um, they obviously believe in you in some pathway, um, and it's really up to you then. And what I would say is the bright lights of D1 are great, um, and everyone wants that, but that may be at a cost, and that may be financial, that may be game time, that may be not feeling part of the group, because if you've got a roster of 30, and we're only traveling with 23, seven players are staying behind. Um, you've got to find the right fit for what you're looking for. So academically, does it have the degree that I'm after? In terms of uh, playing, ask those questions. Like, where do I fit? Am I going to be, like, I'm a left back. What do you see your left back um, doing in the game plan? Do I fit that formation? Do I fit the system? Do I fit how um, they play? Do I need to be athletic? Do I need to be one of those guys that just am a ball winner and give it? You know, like all these questions you can ask and coaches will be honest with you because they want the best result on the field. And then the academic side of it is just make sure that you're getting your grades. Like we did have players that, you know, we had to really push to make sure they got the academic numbers to be eligible. Love that. This has been a lot about the soccer chat. Let's make this a bit more general for other people that are listening to this. Let's say an athlete is going to have an interview with a college coach. What are some red flags for you as a college coach when you're talking to a student athlete? Could it be the clothes that they're wearing, they're eating chewing gum? What is it? Everything. We're, we're looking at everything. Like when you're in a room, you can see their room. Is it tidy? Um, are their parents there? And for me, like we like to talk to the kid or the athlete because or student athlete because that gave us a real um, idea of them. We don't want their parents asking those questions, especially in the first couple of visits, just because or the first couple of meetings because we're trying to get to know you. Um, and then we will bring parents in because we, we need that information. You need to, yeah, you want to talk to them, right? Correct, a hundred percent. But that may be at a later point. Um, definitely body language. Um, definitely no chewing gum. Hats on backwards. Hats on because sometimes you can't see their face in general and. You're looking for their body language. Like when you ask a question, how are they responding? Um, are they asking good questions? Like when I'm asking all these questions as a coach, really we're wanting you to ask us questions because know about us, know about our program. How do we operate? Like, and can you find video footage of previous years of the school or even ask for it? Because at the end of the day, you need to fit us. Yeah. and we need to fit you it's a two-way thing it's a win-win you scratch my back i scratch yours um, but interview process is key you know yeah i had a college coach call me and he said that they hung up the phone one time with an athlete because an athlete asked the coach what conference they're in <laughs> yeah do your research do your research and, and and honestly you have to suck up a little bit to coaches like for my our example both our um our head coach and associate head coach at the time were hall of famers of purdue fort wayne so if you know that information and go, hey, like you guys were great and you guys played for the school, like what attracted you to play at Purdue for when, when you were there? Yeah. Rather than waiting for the coaches to drag that out of you. For me, like we're looking for confidence and that enthusiasm and wanting to be part of our school. Um, it's not just one way of like, hey, like we just want to come and play in the state. It's like, what are you looking to get out of us? Like the school, how can we help you? And if you ask those questions, the coaches will answer. You know, yeah. and if they don't have the answer right there, they'll come back to you. Yeah, no, that's really good advice, man. When should kids start the college recruitment process? Do you reckon? Honestly, I, I like, I I would just look all the time. Like, there's no early time. Obviously, there's a time period where you can actually contact coaches communicate, and communicate. Yeah, 12 and around June. Yeah, hundred percent. But like, I, if I'm really keen on going to the states and I already know where I'm at in terms of what I want to study, look it up. You know, the information is all there. But as I said, I said this earlier, we had a we had a player, the first player, uh, Kiwi player that we took to Purdue Fort Wayne in, in the time that I was there, picked him up one month before, you know, it can be late, it can happen, but hopefully you're doing your due, due diligence, and I've been saying that um, throughout the day, just around like players, you want to know, because it's four years of your life, or two years if you go into to another, another place, but you need to be comfortable in that environment too. So yeah. find out as much as you can, it, Going back to your question, it's literally about when you feel like I want to go to the state, I'm already looking into it and obviously when I'm actually going to be able to talk to coaches, um, then I want to have all those things in order. 100%. And just to make everyone know, this isn't a paid this isn't a paid thing at all. Like Mark's just kindly come out over here uh, to give athletes advice and to jump on this podcast. 
what are things that athletes should look for in recruitment agencies? Because there are some amazing recruitment agencies out there, but there's also some ones that you should probably stay away from. And I don't want you to pump us up in any way. Like, what should you, if you had your kids at your academy or um, et cetera, what are some things that people should be looking for in a recruitment agency? Honesty. Like, that's the first and foremost thing that I'm looking for. So, for my example, like, I'm with a club and uh, we're looking at how we can um, help kids' pathways. And the reason why I'm here is the honesty that I've had um, and just the upfront chats. And um, everyone wants to help you. That's, that's the first thing that's said, right? But then it's actions speak louder than words. And I'm looking for people that give the opportunities to kids, they're honest with them, there's no there's no beating around the bush on things, like if mm. things are not there, like people have to be realistic, that's the big thing, right? So everyone's looking for that D1 opportunity. Anyone can say, yeah, we can we can try and find you a D1. Pay us some money and we'll get started. Pay us some money and then what happens if it doesn't work out? Yeah, 100%, but at the end of the day, be realistic, go with what you feel is right. Um, but the first and foremost thing, as I said, honesty is key to me and, and having that relationship and being able to work with them, that person throughout the process um, and with a team behind you, it definitely, like, it gives you benefits. So from my point of view with, with my club, I'm literally saying, like, yeah, I've got connections, but the reality is it's a bit of a process and if you get that person behind you, backing you, helping you with all those things and making sure that you're hitting all the boxes um, and giving you honest feedback of where you sit in the college kind of pl uh, programs, um, that's a massive bonus because you're not wasting your time looking at things that are unrealistic. Love that. Yeah, we're always really black and white with athletes. And I, like in the eight years we've been doing this, like we always, before an athlete comes on board with us, we tell them what's the chance of getting a deal, where will they go, and how much will they need to budget for going to the US, whether it's a full or a partial. But then also knowing the cost outside of that as well, like flights, medical insurance, um, NCAA registration fees, visa fees, the service fee, which puts in the social security system. There's so much that goes into it. So if you are talking to recruitment agencies, make sure that they are being realistic. Like if you're playing in the second 11 high school soccer team or and these, or you're like a golfer and your tournament average is 78 and this recruitment agency says, yeah, we can get you a full ride at a division one school. They're lying to you. Okay. They're lying to you. It's just not gonna work. So do your due diligence. But I always encourage encourage athletes when they come on board with us to talk to other athletes first. Yep. Like we're very black and white with our approach. And I think if you're talking to other recruitment agencies, definitely talk to parents and athletes, but do it at random. Just go on their Instagram, find out some athletes that they've worked with, and just DM them. Yeah, Kiwis will help Kiwis. Like yeah. that's the big thing, right? If you're in the process and um, some of your mates at your clubs are looking at different ways as well and they're already involved in, a, in, a, in an agency, ask them, ask them questions. How, how does it go? What does this look like? Um, when should I be reaching out? You know, there's, there's I feel like in, in the last 10 years, New Zealand's dynamics have changed. You know, you've got more information, you've got people willing to help. It's now a pathway, whereas at the time, like when I was playing, it was, oh, I go to the UK and yeah, there's this college route. But I'm gonna be honest with you, like the college route I love because you get your degree and whatever happens from there like life is kind of in a good place so for example Purdue Fort Wayne kids that we had from New Zealand had their one year of you know working in the states and now there's a couple that um, were also at schools where I know that they've gone on and they work they're living and working in the states now and Amazing. living a great life you're going to a wedding soon aren't you I'm not but um yeah quite oh, a few one of your guys are, that you one know of our of guys yeah, uh, yeah. first guy that went over I'm um, sure he won't me mind mention Andy O'Donoghue First player that went over to Purdue Fort Wayne in my time. Um, he's getting married to uh, his college girlfriend um, of many years now. They're getting married on January 6th um, in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And look, for the parents that are listening to this, he is coming back to New Zealand. He's not leaving yes. us for good. <laughs> so if your kid goes to college, don't be scared that they're going to get married and stay in America. No, he's coming back. He's going to be at Franklin in the first yeah. team next year. Yeah, cool. Easy. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate it. And I want to thank you for your time because I know you're staying here for the next like four hours chatting to people about, you know, how your experience was and answering any questions they have. And you're doing this on your own time. So I really appreciate that, man. I, I offered to you pay, did. but you said no. So no. <laughs> I don't want to take any money. For me, it's all about the kids. I love that, man. You're, you're, you're definitely one of, the, one of a kind, man, because there's a lot of people with their own agenda. So I love what you do. And I know we've been talking, you know, about some things that we could be doing next year together. So I'm really excited about that as well. So yeah. thank you for your time. And uh, yeah, make sure you guys listen to our other podcasts on Spotify, on YouTube. If you want a free college consultation where you send us your sports CV, your academics, 
and then we tell you what kind of deal you can get, just go onto Instagram, fill out the link in bio, there's a free consultation button there, and then a member of our team will be in touch with you. Until then, see you next time. Beautiful.